afternoon. All right. Look at the person sitting right next to you. Tell that person, I'm glad that you're here today. And we just wanted to say we're going through the series called Living Faith. Of course, we're studying the book of James. And the God is called Santiago. And I don't know how James and Santiago could be closely related to each other. But that's what it is. So this is very interesting because, again, uh, this is James, of course, writing to the believers. So this is a letter that is specifically, you know, circulated in the first century to the churches around the Roman Empire. And these are the believers who call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And today, we're going to go talk to a very, very interesting topic. And this is about planning. And let me ask you this. Let me, let me ask you this question. So the question is, how many of you here... You are a person who plans. You love to plan, like if you're gonna have one, go somewhere, you write some stuff, you know, you have some big box, you've got some things that you're gonna bring, you write those. How many of you like that? You like to plan? You know, things, okay, we got, come on. This is not a trick question, I just wanted to know. All right, really, I just wanted to know. Okay, we got some few, some few, good, good. And, okay, we got some few. How many of you here, you just, you're just spontaneous, you don't plan. You're pretty much like, I want to just go flow. You know, I want to go and flow and I'm stressed when we're planning. How many of you are like that? Okay, so, okay, a lot of laid back people. I want to be honest, I'm, I'm kind of like a mixture of both, but my wife likes to plan. She writes everything. She has a tick box of uh, things that, especially if we're going to go for a trip, she has some list, tick box of the things that we want to make sure, she want to make sure that it's going to be, you know, we're going to bring it, we're not going to forget anything. So for me, like if we go out of town or we travel somewhere, it's kind of like a mixture for me. Once I get there, I want to just flow and see what's going to happen. But for some, it's got to be on oh, this first day, we're going to go do this, you know, and we're going to go to Disneyland and we're going to be there at 8 a.m. And at 12 o'clock, we're going to have lunch. And then after that, we're going to have to be here like that. It's okay. It's nothing bad about that. It's just different personality, okay? Look at the person sitting right next to you. Tell that person, you're okay. You're normal. All right? Because people are different. And this is what we're going to talk about today, about planning. And let me just go open this one in James chapter 4. It's there on the screen. And I'm going to read this. It says, Now listen, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go to the city or that city. Spend a year there. Carry on business and make money. Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Continue in verse 15. Instead, you ought to say, If, the Lord, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast and brag, and all such boasting is evil. Anyone then who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it, sins. Now I know you're reading this text and you're confused. So is God anti-planning? Is that something that this scripture is saying? That's what we're going to talk about today. Can you join me in a word of prayer? Lord, thank you. We come before you today. We're asking that you would speak to us. Lord, I pray that there will be clarity as we read, as we study, as we examine Lord James' encouragement to the church. And as such, Lord, my prayer, God, is that you would be with us today. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go back to verse 13. Let me just put that on the screen for you as we start this text. It says, now listen. Of course, every time you hear that, you read that in the Bible, that means it's trying to get your attention. Now listen, how many of you here, you have a mom, right? And your mom wants to talk to you. Anak is the word. And of course, that your mom wants to get your attention. You listen. It's because there's something that is important. Okay, and not this kid, daughter, son, so on to say that. All right, it says here, now listen, you who say, and let's read that. Today or tomorrow, we will go to this city, and that city, spend a year there, carry on business, and make money. Interesting, because if you are a planner, and you look at that, and if you're having a business plan, the first question is this, who is the people that James is talking to here? Basically, there are business people, because where did you find that? Look at the last portion, carry on business and make money. <laughs> business people. And now some of you are tuning out. Okay, Pastor, I'm not a business person, so this is not for me. Actually, it's all, it's for all of us. You know why? Because first and foremost, whether we like it or not, our life 
Money is important. Amen. Money is not important for you. <laughs> How many of you agree with me? Money is important. Yes. Now, money is not everything, but it is important. Yes. You can't go to a dealership right now and say, I want some car. Where's your money? Nothing. I just want some car. You're going to rob that dealership. That's what it is. You can't do that. So, some people are saying, no, money is not important. Okay, let's talk about your career. Of course, you went to college to finish something, or you didn't, you got some vocational training. So, of course, it's something that you love, but at the end of the day, you're going to look for a job because you want to make money. It's not like because you're coming in there, oh, oh, do you like this job? Yes, why? I don't care what salary you give me, I just want to be here. No, no, no. If that's you, please. Work for us. <laughs> we'll be happy to have you anytime. But that's not the reality because we need money. But when you look at this, look at this. This is kind of like they're talking, and so that means it speaks for all of us, right? So now you look at that text, it's interesting because if you are a businessman or something, someone who plans, look at this. Number one, if you're a planner, there's a mission and vision. What is the mission and vision in this? There is what? Make money. Right? The purpose is clear. This person is calling out people that their goal is to make money. And if you're putting up a business, come on. The whole purpose of a business is what? To make money. Because according to Dr. Greg Mitchell, there's two needs of every individual. Security and significance. You want it to feel that you matter, but also you want to be secure. Regard a single, married, everything that's the need of a, a human being. Security and significance. You want to be secure and also you want to know you want to know that your life matters. Amen? So that being said, the purpose is to make money. What's the detailed plan? Let's read the text. Now listen, who you say today or tomorrow? Oh, there's a date. Just like in any other plan. A specific date. Today or tomorrow. We will go to that city. Oh, there's a location. There's the when. There's the where. There's a specific city to where you're going to go. Also, spend a year there. There's a time frame. Like if you're planning to go to Florida, to go to Disneyland. You said, when is this going to be? It's on September 24th. Date. Where? Orlando. City. We're going to spend seven days there. Spend a year there. We're going to, what? Not make money. You're going to spend a whole lot of money. But, you look at that. So you look at that, seems like a good plan to me. But let me ask you this question. What's missing? Bam. Come on. You whispered something. I saw you. Purpose? There's only a purpose. Make money. What's missing? There's a product, of course. Of course, there's a business. What's missing? And this is where James is trying to teach us because most of the time, we have everything figured out, but all of us are missing something here. And it's trying to bring it to their attention. What is missing there? Carl? God. He pointed it up there. What's missing there? When you study the book of James, we started in James chapter 1, verse 1, and verse 2 says, Consider it pure joy when you face trials of many kind. He's encouraging people who are going through trials and difficulties. And then he encouraged them to have this perseverance because the perseverance will produce the fruit that God wants, which is what? Maturity. And then he moves on. And then at the very end of chapter 3, he begins to unpack some things that he wants to correct. It starts with what he says, that's what he called wisdom, earthly wisdom, or God, uh, uh, worldly wisdom versus godly wisdom. Remember that? At the very end of chapter 3. And then he begins to start with chapter 4. 4 verse 1 says, what causes a fight and quarrels among you? Here, James is pinpointing a very serious problem among believers. Listen to me now, and here's what it is. Pride. What is pride? 
not fried chicken. That's a different one. That's fried. And James says, question about pride is this. What causes fight and quarrels among you? He said, does it come from that evil and selfish desire? Because you wanted to be, what, pursue something. You covet and do some things, but yet you don't do that. What is that? Self-centeredness. Self-centeredness is another what, ugly head of pride. That everything revolves around you. What I want, what I need, so you go to the two needs. I want to be secure, so I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that I'm secure in life. Significance, I want to matter. So I'm going to go tell everyone, but of course you're not saying it, but people could see it, that you are important. Self-centeredness. And then he moves on. And then he said at the very middle that we should not be friends with the world. What's being friends with the world? Another ugly hand of pride, which is what? From self-centeredness and then friendship with the world. And then what we talked about last Sunday, that we should not judge others. is because when you start judging others, that's what you call self-arrogance. That's the arrogance of the heart. You know, when you judge and look at others, you size them up, right? And then you want gossip about them. Because James said that, do not slander, do not gossip in a sense, is because what? You have this moral ascendancy that you're better than them. Listen to me. There are good traits that we have as Filipinos. But one thing that we need to watch out for is this, because we have this crap mentality. And we are more susceptible to this than any other culture. Because when we make it to where we are, we tend to look down on people and compare ourselves with others. The Bible calls that arrogance. That's why you begin to slander people. You talk about them because you're telling them either that you're better than them or actually you're jealous than them. Amen? And of course that's not you. It's others. Look at the person sitting right next to you. Tell that person it's not you. Come on, tell that person it's not you. It's the person sitting on your chair. Whoever that is. And now, what is this then? Because everything is good, but something is missing. God. So what is James saying? His God is not unlike plan. You know, planning is not foolish. I mean, the Bible says that, you know, God is a God of order. You look at different gifts. Actually, what the Paul mentioned in the first Corinthians is that there's a gift of administration. So God gave you the ability to think, to plan. And God is a planner. Hello. So what's the problem here? Because the problem here is this. The word is self-sufficiency. That you don't need God. That you are good enough. I could make plans. I could plan to go to a city. I could plan to how much, how how long I'm going to stay there. I'm going to have my own thing. I'm going to make business. I'm going to make it big. But without God. That's the problem there. What is that? That's another ugly head of pride. And that is self-sufficiency. That you don't need God. You are good by yourself. That is the voice of this culture. That's why you hear this word. You are the captain of your soul. But the Bible says, no, no, no. You, God is the shepherd of your soul. You got this. You got to believe in yourself. Great slogan, but it's not in the Bible. You know what's in the Bible? You got to believe in God. See how these two things is different. And James was confronting them because the mindset is wrong. And yet they call themselves Christian. By the way, the letter of James is for believers, not for unbelievers. So that means you could be a believer, but you could still have this mindset. And by the way, look up here. All of us are guilty. Even me. So I don't want you to sit there and think like, yeah, yeah, I know, I know my friend. So now you're judging, you're back to week number one. <laughs> you're back to week last week. So see, see how James wrote this because he knows. Because when we talk about topics like this, you're thinking about other people except you. Let me just say it now. You're all, we are all guilty. Because we have made plans, we have made things, we have laid out everything, and here's what happened. After 
after laying down everything, then you said, God, can you bless this? So as if God, you know, has this magic dust that he just put on you and suddenly everything would be okay. If that's the case, then the question is, who is God in your life? So God becomes a lucky charm. God becomes an antidote for curses, but not really God. So you might as well replace God with that frog that they put in front of the Chinese restaurant that you know has this coin in the mouth for you to be blessed, or that hip hop cat. What's up, y'all? Because he's not God. He's a genie. He's an ATM machine. He's your lucky charm. Because at the end of the day, you are God because... So what is self-sufficiency? Let's put that on the screen for you to understand. Let me just click this on the screen. Self-sufficiency is this. It is not prideful independence. This sin believes that we can live autonomous, independent lives apart from the one who created us. Interesting, isn't it? What's the scene in the garden? When the devil spoke to Adam and Eve, what was the promise? Oh, he's lying to you. When you eat that fruit, you could be like God. Because we wanted to be like God. We wanted to be in control. Of course, you don't announce that because people are going to look at you. Know? But everything that we do actually screams that I want to be like God. And then Adam and Eve actually eat first. As men, eat first. I just want to say eat first, not, not Adam, eat first. Took the fruit, but read your Bible. Adam was there. The problem is this. Sometimes we make a fun of that, that Eve took the first bite. Actually, that's the problem with Adam at that very moment is that because Adam was watching. Here's the greatest fault of that. Adam was watching if Eve is going to die. <laughs> So it's like, <laughs> then she took this fruit, bit the fruit, she didn't die. And then gave the fruit to Adam. But God gave the mandate, mandate to whom? Adam. So he failed in his leadership. Because, go ahead, I want to taste the fruit, go ahead. Let's see if she's going to die. What a man. That was okay, that's a different one. So, and here's what happened. So when they ate the fruit for the first time, and people are talking about sin and pride, actually that's the start of self-sufficiency. Because you read your Bible, everything that that created was good. Remember? He created the, you know, the let there be light. And then that came, it was good. He created the bird, the birds, the, the fields, everything. It was good, it was good, it was good. God created the man. It was very good. It was not just good, or very good. So after that, here's what happens. For the first time, Adam, when he ate that, and Eve, when they ate that, here's the promise, you're going to be like God. What is that? Because they wanted to define what's right and wrong apart from God. Isn't that still the sin of this generation, the men in the generation? We want to define what's right and wrong in our own terms because of what? Self-sufficient. I don't need God to tell me what is right and what is wrong. All of that, so what's now the encouragement of James. All of us are guilty. Amen? Look at the person sitting right next to you. Tap that person, tell that person you're guilty. Amen? Okay, just you. Okay. Don't worry, I'm going to call you that. Uh, you're guilty. 
And we don't want to hear that sometimes. But yes, because we have made plans. And the last, after making the plans, we include God in the journey. How you have done that before? That that many times. For example, you're looking for a job. Usually what's the way, oh, how much money, this by the word is, we're gonna make money. How much money am I gonna make? All right. And then after that, pray, pray, you go went to the interview, and then were you about to be hired, then you ask God, Lord, is this the job for me? You've been going through it for the one night. And then suddenly you want to invoke God for you to be, what, blessed. But you fail the proof. Self-sufficiency. Watch out for this in our lives. And here's some two truths that I'm going to share to you. Here's the first one. We are not in control of our future and life. You are not in control, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, but that is not what it is. You are not in control. That's why when people say, I'm going to make my own destiny. Yes, by all means, but you are not in control. Look at the text and let me explain this thing. Two things that James is saying here. The first one is that, why? So after asking that rhetorical questions and then he said this, why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. How many of you here, you know what will happen tomorrow? If you know, guess what? Tell me. Where is the mega lotto drop? Just, just want to make sure. Oh, that's bad? Oh, okay, all right. But yes, we can. That's why there's so many, many stories about, you know, back to the future, time machines, and all of those. Is because we wanted to control the future. We wanted to what? Control tomorrow. But we are not in control, according to James. You don't even know what will happen tomorrow. You don't even know if you're going to be alive tomorrow. A good friend of mine, a pastor in the Philippines, we just learned, passed away, playing basketball, collapsed. So sad. 51 year old. You don't know. That's why so many movies, I mean, Flash, Flashpoint, he has to go back to save his mom. Right? Some of you are like, what's that? It's okay. It's the nerd in me coming out. Back to the future. You have to go back to change the future because you're not happy with your life. Because we always want to control tomorrow. But the problem, James says, you don't know what will happen tomorrow. So how many of you here, you made plans, but it didn't turn out the way you wanted? So you got there, remember? You got there, oh, we're going to have, like for us, we went to Florida, we're going to go swim and everything. And she got sunburned. Three days turned to one day. The thunderstorm made it impossible for us to swim. Because once the thunderstorm is there, everybody needs to get out of the beach. Come on, in the Philippines we swam, even there's thunderstorm. <laughs> if it is raining and there's thunderstorm, the more fun it is. <laughs> but here, no, oh, get inside, get inside. I'm like, what? What? Of course, everybody's scared and people are going to die. And rightly so, I'm not saying that we're, I just grew up in a place where it, it's fun to swim and there's thunderstorm. Fatalistic, of course. But let me ask you this. And to all the plans that you've made, were you able to control the future? Predict it. Okay. James is saying, sometimes you have to watch out. James is pointing to us our limitations so that we could depend on God. You cannot control or you don't even know the future, but there is someone who knows the future. The Bible says that he's the same yesterday and forever. Today, yesterday, and forever. When God looks at our lives, he knows what's going to happen. That's why we need to see but the problem is this, we think we know better. I'm going to take this job is because I'm going to make more money. Look up here. I have no problem about that. But the question is, have you asked God? Did you seek the Lord? Because for many people, man is the answer. 
but for James it's not. I have seen people with much money, but they're miserable. And I've seen people also with less money and also they're miserable. Because some people say, no, money, when you have money, then there's more problem. No, 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 it's a tool. My only thing is that planning for tomorrow, did you include God? Or you're kind of like, Lord, I'm done with my plan in my life. I know what's going to happen in my life for the next 25 years. No, you don't. Because you don't know what will happen tomorrow. I lost my first wife when she was 38 years old. But our plan is for us to grow old together. We didn't know that she's going to pass away. Her. I didn't know. Here's the next one. What is your life? You are a mist that appears, that appears for a little while and then vanishes. What is James trying to point out here? That you cannot control the future and also you cannot, what? You can't control your life, man. You don't have a home. What's that? Vapor, or some translation would say you are a mist. What is that? A mist speaks about two things. Life is tempor uh, uh, temporary. Life is fragile. Moses wrote in Psalm 90 verse 12, teach us to number our days aright. That means teach us more to value our lives. You are here today and God tomorrow. Okay. That's why, how many of you know this? That's why the Bible says it's fed, it's in, in the book of Proverbs, it's better to go to the house of mourning than to the house of feasting. Why? Mourning means someone died. Because when you go to a house of mourning, you realize the brevity of life. Life is short. We just experienced that in the last two years. We're just one virus away to be wiped out from this earth. But who holds our lives in the palm of his hand? God. Security. I'm going to live some of your goals. I'm going to live like, you know, 100 plus. But 100 years of miserable life. Is that the goal? Significance. I want to be famous so people would know me and become miserable. You're not in control. Sorry. But also in saying that, I just want, don't want you to have a fatalistic view of life that you just go out and, you know, I'm not in control. I'm going to do whatever. No, 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 no. That's why we go to the next one, all right? Because we are here, God is calling us, according to James. We are, we are to seek the will of God in all our plans. So now, if that's the case, he's not asking you not to plan. He's not asking you not to plan for your what, wedding. He's not asking not to plan if you want to have a house. He's not asking you not to plan if you have a better job. That's not the point here. The point is this, that you include God. We are to seek Him. Look at this and look at the terminology here. Let's read instead, interesting word instead. That means there is a contrast. This, 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 and that. Instead, what is that? You ought to say, saying comes from a mindset, if it is the Lord's will. That means you're including God. What do you mean by including God? It's not just you plan on your own. Actually, you include God from the very beginning. You sit down, you pray, you seek Him. Amen? And then after that, Lord, what do you want? For example, I really like this someone, Lord, but before anything else, God, is this really what you want? It's not that you're already deep in the relationship. You are already dating. You're already liking each other. And then you ask God, Lord, is this you? <laughs> really? God is not anti-relationship. God, what? Created marriage. But God is not a sprinkled dust. You include Him. You're praying for a new job? You pray. You're praying if God wants to, for you to stay here in the U.S.? You pray. It's not because, Lord, I'm staying here in the U.S. It's because 
part na yan, lagi like here. Pero it's too small. The point is, is this the place where God wants you? Because I believe there's no accident. The mere fact that you are here, that means God has a purpose. The mere fact that you're working in that company, that means God has a purpose. The mere fact that all of the billion people in the world, I married my wife. There's a purpose. Isn't that a miracle? Out of the billion people in the world, you ended up together? I'm helping you here, bro. I'm helping you here. Come on, this is the point. You ended up together. Out of the billion people in the world. Is that a coincidence? Jason, they ended up with Sheila. Whoa. Ursi, <laughs> you ended up with Oliver. Yeah. <laughs> no kidding factor. I like it. It's great for that. We have made a lot of plans. But James is calling us out. Where is God? And here's the problem. When our plans start failing, that's where we need God. Lord, it's not working. Lord, it's not in this world. Help me, God, fix this. And God says, ah, now you want me to be involved. How to seek God's will. Let me share a few practical steps here. Number one, surrender your personal desire. You don't want to be self-sufficient? Surrender your personal desire. What do you mean by this? Look up here, look up here. Let me just say this quickly. What is that? If you're coming to God, and if you're not willing to listen to God, to correct your plan, then you're not seeking God. You're informing God. There's a difference between seeking and informing. Like for me, my I love to play basketball. And we have chronicled this. I have blown my two Achilles. And in my left Achilles recovery right now. I, I'm just I just finished my rehab. And according to my doctors and physical therapists that I could play competitive basketball by October. And I'm so happy to share that. Hope. See? So the doubt, the doubt in this room. You know, just can't. And of course, I reported that to my wife. And the same reaction that you are saying right now is her reaction. Oh. Of course, I told her, yes, and you could call my therapist. And she said, I don't need to because you're not playing basketball. He said, but my doctor said. Yeah, but I'm your wife. So either we sit down and figure things, these things out. <laughs> or I'm just gonna do whatever I want. Which is which. And seeking God is the same. You pray, which is the next one. Let's put that on the screen. You spend time in God's word. You pray. It's because you're trying to figure out, Lord, what is this? And everything is different for everyone. Amen? And then you ask the Lord before you pull the trigger. God, I want to know. Because at the end of the day, is it really our plan or His plan that we want? The Bible says, Psalm 37, verse 4, Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. Plus, we delight in Him. When we seek Him, God is the one who opens the door for you. So maybe for some of you, God closes a door in your workplace. God closes a door in your relationship. But if we seek God, God knows your need. You don't make it happen. He will make it happen. See the difference? Because the other one, if it is full of you, then 
you're going to work it out. Let's go back to verse 1. What causes fighting quarrels among you? It comes from this evil desire. We're back to the self. I'm going to do this. I'm going to accomplish this. I'm going to buy this. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then you look at your kids also. They're stressed because you're stressed because you're trying to accomplish something that only God could do. At the end, who gets the glory? You, not him. Because you really work hard for it. And then we put a badge, of course. Oh, self-made. I did this. Who gets the glory? Not God. You. Sounds familiar to you? That's you and I. Everyone is guilty. And here's the last one. Seek God. Seek God the counsel. What is that? Please, if you're going to go approach people and you're approaching them because you know what they're going to say and you're avoiding those godly people that you know they're going to speak the truth in love, that means you're not seeking godly counsel. You want to go in an echo chamber for them to repeat what you want. Do you have those kind of people that would speak the truth in love? Sure very precious because now in this cancel culture people doesn't want to what infringe and speak the truth because you're going to get canceled as a friend but if you are truly a real friend you have to speak the truth in love and here's the last one last two verses and i'm going to pray i'm going to read this that's why, as it is, you boast and brag. What is that? As it is, is going back to verse what? 15. The first one. Sorry, 13. As it is, you boast and brag. And all such boasting is evil. I want you to look up here. When you're making plans and you are not seeking the Lord and you're not including God, it's self sufficiency. You're actually unintentionally telling God, I don't need you. I'm perfectly capable on my own. That's very dangerous. And for God, evil. Amen? All of you are silent today. Are you still okay? All right. Let's finish the verse. And then he says, anyone then who knows the good that he ought to do and doesn't do it, what? It's a sin. So now you know what to do. The question is, what are you going to do about it? All of us, maybe you're here today, you've made plans, and you have already did a lot of things. Here's the good thing about our God. God could always bring you. God is always there to help us. But like what we've studied today, it's either you're going to say, I could get away, or I could either maneuver my way out of this, or you're going to be humble before the Lord and say, God, I need you. Because there's some plans that I have set in motion that now the consequences is not good. And that's why today, Lord, I'm still coming before you. Please help me. Take this pride of self-sufficiency away from my heart. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this word. Thank you for speaking to us. Heads up, heads bowed up, peace and eyes closed. If you're here today, and I know... You're listening to the Lord and the Holy Spirit is here ministering to us. And you are here and you know that you have made plans that is set in motion right now and you're reaping some consequences that are not good. And you're saying, God, it's wrong. Forgive me. And today, God, I'm coming before you. I'm submitting this to you. And I don't know what's going to happen. And I don't know, God, and how you're going to help me. I don't know, God, and how you are going to shift, help me in this kind of situation. Shift this situation, Lord. That you will be honored and you will be glorified. But, Lord, today starts with, just like what James said, submit yourself to the Lord. It's about, it's the calling is submitting our plans before God. If that's you, heads bowed and peace and eyes closed. Can you lift up your hands and let me pray for you today? Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, thank you. Yes, thank you for your humility. 
The Bible says that God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. We preach about that last week. Lord, right now I pray for my brothers and sisters. Lord, lifting up their hands. Lord, you love them. And you care for them deeply. Even Lord, as they are coming before you in humility, Lord, you said that you give more grace. And grace is being extended today. And grace, Lord, is being given to those who are humbling themselves. Lord, I pray as they, as they seek your face, even at this moment, I pray, God, that you would lead them, that you would guide them, that you would direct them. Indeed, Lord, as they put you first, Lord, my prayer is, God, indeed, is your promise. You would give them the desires of their heart. But, Lord, in this process, I pray that they would include you. That is, Lord, knowing, Lord, hearing your plans so that they could submit to your plans and submit to your will. Lord, thank you in this moment. We honor you, Lord. Come on, if you're lifting up your hands, just pray, Lord, right here, right now, I'm submitting my plan to you. My plan over my family, my, our plans in our family, my plan over my work. Lord, we're submitting that. Because you know what's best. Lord, forgive us, Lord, from this uh, assumption and presumptions, Lord, that, that we have pulled the trigger and yet, Lord, just then and then we think that everything will be okay. But today, we acknowledge our limitation. And that's why we come to you. Thank you, Lord. Put down your hands. Next, if you're here, and here's the last altar call that I'm going to make. That you are facing, you know, a, 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 a decision. That you are planning right now for something about work. Where you're going to work. Or things about in the future. School. And you're saying, God, speak to me. Lord, I say, seek you, Lord, or about relationships, and you, are, you want God to, you know, process it with the Lord, whatever that is. I want you to lift up your hands and let me pray for you. Yes, yes, thank you, Lord. I pray for each and every one today. Lord, thank you. Bless them today. Lord, as you are, you are speaking to them, Lord, thank you that you are reminding them, Lord, that you care for them, that you love them so much. Lord, just like a father whose greatest joy is to sit down with their kids, you know what I mean, also as a parent, and, and plan and help my kid, Lord, and how to be successful and how to get things, Lord, in the way we uh, 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 that would bless them. That is your heart more than mine. And that's why I pray for each and every one of them today, that they may find and hear that small, still voice that comes from you. Lord, thank you. Put down your hands. We honor you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody says, Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God a praise.